Constable Odo wants Quark to remove some bar stools from the bar. Cassidy Yates says that Captain Sisko is a good parent because he knows all the cliches by heart. And Jake <laughs> Sisko is working on a crime novel, but he's hit a wall in his writing. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Seventh <laughs> Rule with Jake Sisko himself, Sirach Lofton. Hello, everybody. My name is Ryan T. Husk, and today we are doing a review of Deep Space Nine's Season 6, Episode 25, entitled The Sound of Her Voice, story by Pam Pietroforte, probably Pietroforte, teleplay by our good pal Ronald D. Moore, and directed by Weinrich Colby. This was June 10th. 1998. Where were you? How you doing, Sirac? Doing well. Pietro Forte. I wonder if that means the force of Peter. Feet. Or, yeah. Because, you yeah. know, P-I-E-T sometimes, or P-I-E-D sometimes mean feet. But, yeah, let's just go with Peter instead. That's probably better. <laughs> Foot strength. Well, no, I don't know. Foot strength. That means you're like... <laughs> I got, this is the first know, time we've seen uh, Pam's name pop up in the, in the storyline, so that's pretty... I think so. Shout out to, to I would, I I would remember that time. difficulty. In, oh, wait, no. Yeah. no. No. She also has a story by credit on statistical probabilities. How did we mm. forget that? That was uh, the one with the uh, the four geniuses that are in that right. room with the right with Bashir, right? The exactly. uh, mm -hmm. high hybrids. Yeah. Okay, so okay, um, clearly, kind of uh, off the beat stories that are not typical. They're atypical type stories. The the ones that uh, Pam yeah. writes. Yeah, and these are the and only two of hers so this is it this is her swan song <clears throat> some twilight zone ish um kind of feel i'm sure she would be a great uh, guest to interview and kind of ask mm. about her influences but i did like this episode sound of her voice is definitely has that kind of old school um feel for me as as far as accomplishing so many different things and it was such a very simple way to do it but it was accomplished so many things in a very low tech kind of way right mm -hmm. also uh before we get too deep into this we want to make sure to give a very special thanks to our friend out in austria don't say germany it's austria robert kaiser thank you robert special thanks to you Hope you enjoy this one. Yeah, Austria. Yeah, that's the one. So I was. In, he also, I was in Robert. Also goes to, to uh, Robert. Yeah, we also give a. We also see him at Star Trek conventions all the time. So we'll see you in Vegas, my friend. And sorry, what were you saying, Sirach? I was just saying how beautiful Vienna is. If anybody mm. gets a chance to go out there, mm -hmm. gorgeous. All right. <clears throat> yeah. I almost went to Vienna. I was. Backpacking around Europe, you know, did uh, Amsterdam, London, Brussels, Prague, and I was going to go to Vienna, but whoops, a daisy started running out of money. So I had to kind of U-turn it and go to France. <laughs> I'm like, I can chill over here. I got family. So. <laughs> so so that was my neck, you know, Budapest and Vienna. Never got to see it, though, but I uh, feel like I'm really missed out there. I feel the same about Budapest because when I was in Vienna, I was going to go shoot over to Budapest. Everybody said how beautiful it was and I yeah. didn't do it. And I, I kind of regret because you're so close and it's so close from there. Yeah. It's just a train. It's just a train right away. So you're like, ah, I could do this. Everything um, feels close when you're in Europe. You're like, you mean it's just yeah. this other historic city just right over there? Just <laughs> right. Just hop right. on a train for like 17 euros or whatever it is, you know. Yeah, you're like, this is good living. And, and, and comfortable trains, like where you can yes. like literally just sleep, like lay out your stretch, stretch out your legs. Out, yeah. yeah, comfortable plush seats. I mean, like a good train ride. Um, so shout That's... out to the the Europeans out there that are doing their transportation and living and right. They have a lot to see. Yeah, living right, and they have a lot to see. A lot of beautiful cities to uh take in so 
One last thing one day on, I'll go back. on those trains <laughs> is that not only is it a pleasant experience to just stretch your legs out and whatever, it's, it's never crowded, but also just to see the scenery and the countryside. Yeah. You, you get to, you, you feel like you're actually seeing the world rather than just visiting a big city, you know, because everybody, when they travel around, they're just seeing big cities, you know, but when you're on the train, you feel like you're seeing the world. But anyway, don't want to take too much time on that, <laughs> but it's amazing. No, I have to, I mean, that's a hundred percent right. And I remember one time on the train in Switzerland, and as we we're passing through the villages and the countryside, um, there was one piece of graffiti that I don't, I don't remember seeing much graffiti, but there was one mural that we passed by and it was a Tupac mural in Switzerland. I couldn't nice. believe that. I was, seeing it. I was like, is that a Tupac? Is that an mural? accident? So, <laughs> yeah. So uh, you never know what you see on those rides and they're definitely a fun adventure. Mm -hmm. And I uh, kind of envy the fact that she did the backpack thing because that's the kind of adventure and spirit that, you know, it takes to even be on Star Trek essentially to be a part of the, any crew. Right. Nice segue. Gotta, Here we go. Gotta have that backpack. Dude, backpack traveling by mentality. yourself is pretty cool. I didn't realize. But anyway, we can get all into that other times possibly. But uh, just be careful about Amsterdam. That's where your money goes. You think you're good. <laughs> you stop in Amsterdam. Oh, really? It's just, oh, my money left me somehow. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> anyway. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One dude actually broke into my bag, though, and like, couldn't find any money because I had it hidden in a pretty good place. And so the punk stole my pants. So my, my bag was like had been ripped <laughs> open. And I was like, this guy couldn't find anything. So he stole my jeans. He's like, well, whatever. American jeans are probably worse. Anyway, that was kind of a well, he heard you were a smarty pants. So he wanted to take that away from you. <laughs> he wanted <laughs> intelligence by osmosis by rubbing my <laughs> rubbing his face on my pants. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, well, we, how far we've strayed from the sound of her voice. <laughs> Bring us back. Bring yeah. us back. Reel it back in. So, <clears throat> so basically, the first thing that jumps out at me with this episode is the end. I think yeah. it's this, yeah. it's this twist yeah. that you're absolutely not expecting. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you're watching this, there's no doubt in your mind they're going to save that lady, right? Uh, Maybe there is doubt. No, there was, there was some doubt in my mind, actually. There was some doubt. And there was doubt for me even who the lady was. Because there was part oh. of me thinking... Yeah. Part of me was thinking that... Uh, the first thought I had was, this is Jennifer Cisco. I don't know why. <clears throat> been a while. Oh. It's been a long time, but I was thinking, is this Jennifer Cisco kind of, you know, reaching out to him from the afterlife type stuff? And you exactly. just want the drama. You saw Cassidy on the ship, and you're like, I yeah. yeah, give me some yeah. drama. <laughs> give me some drama. <laughs> yes, I thought that's what I. That's exactly what, and it started to be confirmed when. As the story was going on, this voice was saying, "Oh, you don't need her. Get her off the ship. She's no good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Just drop her off on an asteroid somewhere. Trust yeah. me, you'll be happier." Yeah, was that that woman I was talking to earlier? Yeah, definitely get rid of her. <laughs> so I was thinking, "Oh, this is this is a, a really creative way to kind of bring Cassidy back from the dead," and mm -hmm. I thought that that's where it would lead to something like that would touch it you know cisco's heart he'd probably see her find her and it'd be just like some kind of not really her but her you mean bring jennifer back from the dead then right 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 i thought you something just at first that, i thought you meant bring cassidy back because we haven't seen her in a while but you're talking specifically well, about well yeah. Yeah, it's funny because I, I, I wrote cassidy is back so that was one part that obviously that was we haven't seen her for a while and it looked like me too um cisco wasn't that interested in her stories right like he was over there like basically yeah yeah whatever she's like yeah you know and then i did this and i was like and then the, you know and he's like yeah yeah all right and yeah, it felt he was like really and he was wearing yeah. it on his sleeve too he wasn't hiding it very well he's like uh, yeah oh, <laughs> yeah let's go yeah tell me 
Yeah, yeah no, no, I, I, I care, honey. I care. Yeah, really. <laughs> exactly. That was the vibe. And then uh, Bashir walks in and he doesn't say much. And she's like, he doesn't say much. He's like, yeah, I wish you wouldn't say much. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> Seriously, I was I was half expecting for Worf to just come and say, Captain, I recommend prune juice. <laughs> and you're like, OK, so I'll yeah, shot. it looked like he was kind of like not interested a lot. Um, and kind of almost over it in in a, some kind of a way, like, um, uh, you know, I'm over this. Um, yeah. so I felt tough. that, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, what's tough with these bottle episodes is that they have to tell the story in 43 minutes or 45 minutes. And so sometimes you have to just go along with it at the beginning, you know, like when they go. Like when when Cisco says, oh, yeah, I like him better this way, you know, about Bashir. And when Bashir's kind of, you know, grumpy yeah. and moody and you're like, I don't, remember, yeah. I don't remember Bashir being grumpy and moody. I don't remember any of this. I don't yeah. remember Cisco. Like you kind of have to just go with it because that's what they need for this particular story, even though the episodes leading up to this, you're like, that doesn't necessarily track with how I remember yeah. them being. They're friendly. Yeah. They're going, they're going and partying together. They're having fun. And then suddenly they don't get along. And you're like that. That's not how I remember them, but that's, it, it's almost like they want you to just kind of think of this as a, you know, like as a self-contained story and try not to bring any of the baggage of previous episodes into it because it creates this arc in which at the end it reminds them to cherish each other and be nice to each other and remind each other what they mean to them and things like that. So it makes for a better story that way, even if it didn't really track at the beginning, right? No, it did not track. And I felt myself saying for one, I was like, every time I remember Cassidy coming on the ship, uh, Cisco being like really happy and excited. Smitten, and yeah. Yeah, smitten, and his girl is back, and yeah, where have you been all this time? Especially when you have a kind of a long distance relationship, quote unquote, which is what they kind of have because she goes off and does her thing for a right. while and then comes back. So there's obviously time when you're not together, you miss you miss not seeing somebody. So when somebody does come back, you're not like yeah, it's not like normal and average. It's not like yeah, this is just another one of a thousand days that we've spent together going to get breakfast and this and that. It, this is like, I haven't seen you in three months, six months. I don't know whatever the term is, the length is, but it's like, yeah. you're, there's a little level of excitement there normally. So when I saw that he was kind of like not into it and his energy level was super low, I'm thinking, what did I miss between <laughs> the last time I saw her and now? Right? There was an episode 24.5 in there where, yeah. well, I wonder if it could be explained if maybe they were on the defiant for a really long time. You know, I wonder if maybe if they had said, or maybe they did say it and I missed it, but maybe they said, you know, we've been on a mission for two months, in which case, okay, you could see that they're, they're tired, they're grumpy. Or if this episode was just meant to be earlier in this season where it would have worked when they're, you know, they're constantly battling with the dominion or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. But either way, you know, that's, that was a little, you know, you kind of have to just go with it sometimes and just try not, you know, try not to think about it too much. It, it, it was the Bashir thing too, because Bashir seemed way out of character. He, he was like, really like there was a, an underlying type of almost depression that was there. Right. Yeah. It felt like something's deeply bothering him. And then, but when you think back, you're like, what was the last time I saw him? He looked like he was like, everything was perfectly fine. He was, you know, they were handling something and doing something, but, oh, he was wearing that red. The last yeah. time I saw him, he was wearing all red. Uh, Maybe that, that depressed parade. him, kind of depressed him a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> the Bajoran medical suit. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, But he didn't seem kind of bothered or anything. Now it looked like he was just like, in this funk and all of this other stuff. Uh, the O'Brien stuff made sense to me because we just came off of him in the Molly episode. 
And he's always so, a little crotchety, you know. That, he's also yeah, so that's okay. that makes sense. He, I bought like, his. What's wrong, Chief <laughs> O'Brien? Ah, the wife and kids are back. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you, you know, and then and then they're they're back for like one day, and already I lose my daughter. And then she comes back. Then I start thinking, do I even want her back? I don't know. Who knows? I mean, that works with exactly. O'Brien. <laughs> it works with O'Brien. So I totally bought it on O'Brien's side, you know. Um, so the other part. So that's why I thought it was just, they were setting me up for the Jennifer Cisco thing. I was like, okay, this is Cisco Cassidy doesn't seem right. I think they're trying to get rid of her or make her stand up and fight for him right so i thought this is a moment in which it's kind of like hey i know you've been talking to that girl i checked your phone and you know or one of those guys <laughs> i yeah. thought i thought this was gonna be the source of drama between cassidy and cisco like you're up all night talking to this girl and i just got back and da 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 and and and, and then if it's jennifer cisco or a lookalike or somebody who's you know i don't know alternate whatever however they do it um, then it would even be more like you like her because you've been talking all night to her. She physically looks like the woman that you already have been married to, right? Yeah. So basically, I'm out, kind of a thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, that would have been uh, that would have been interesting. I don't know how they would have written that in, like explain it, but they can explain anything away. You know, whatever it's mirror universe. You know, Jennifer Cisco or whatever they want to do. Right. Um, but that would have been fun. It would have been fun to see, you know, Captain Cisco squirm a bit and be like, oh, hey. <laughs> and she's like, aren't you happy to see me? Well, uh, boy, oh, boy. Yeah, boy. I mean, I, oh, hey, Cassidy, what are you doing? I thought I told you to stay on the ship, Cassidy. <laughs> like, why does your voice go up two octaves when you're nervous? Well, I'm not, no, I'm not nervous. So. Uh, I'm not nervous. <laughs> yeah, it would have been fun. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a, one of those kind of things where you just got, you know, you, you have to have a difficult conversation with the, with your woman. So I thought that was going to be the, the case. But they said they did throw me for a few loops there. Um, and the thing I think, well, we could get into the second half because I, I do agree with you. The ending makes the whole thing yeah. work, right? It makes it um a twilight zone type of episode. It makes it one of those episodes where it takes it from just being a normal rescue to an interesting kind of provocative, make you think type of episode where you're like, oh, okay, this, this is interesting. Just the idea of it is interesting, right? Talking yeah. to somebody, you know, um, and this feels like, and this is just a total guess on my part. It feels like the idea was pitched that there's a lady that or a captain that you know they're trying to save and they're just hearing the voice and that element right and you know they they want to go find her and they want to go save her and it feels like the the actual writer's room you know and ronald d moore and ira and them said what about if when they find her she's long since deceased like they they created the twist it feels like somebody that would pitch the story would just pitch you know the main chunk of this and I wouldn't be surprised if they created the twist at the end, which is that when they find her, she's already dead, you know, because because it felt like the natural inclination, what they no normally do in Star Trek is that they get in just in time, they save the, lead, the lady, they actually get to meet her and, and she says, thank you. And they say, no, thank you, that kind of thing, right? And then we're happy mm -hmm. because like we've been watching this episode for an hour we, we don't realize it, but we actually need to see this one. We need to meet her too, because we've just been hearing her voice and her voice and her voice forever. We need to match the face to the voice and we never get that. And that feels like more sophisticated writing that the room would come up with than somebody that's naturally pitching. I could be wrong, but that's just a, my impression. And it's a classic case of the writers giving us what we need rather than what we want. We think we want to see that lady. We think we want to finally get the mystery solved or that, you know, the, the closure. Uh, we think we need that and that's what we want, but really they, get, they don't give us what we think we want and it creates a, a more compelling story at the end there. I think so. 
And what makes it compelling to me is the fact that you have all of these conversations that are based around uh, private thoughts. These are, these are, it's, it's a, it's a way they use this as a springboard to get into very personal private thoughts in each one of the crew members or most of the crew. And so you get to see stuff or have these conversations where you feel like you have confidentiality, right? It's like, okay, me and this random person I've never met before. So it's, it's like almost going into confession and you, you don't see, you know, the priest behind and, you know, you don't see them, you just make your confession and then you walk away. And it's yeah. kind of that anonymity that allows you to feel free to reveal personal thoughts or, or exactly what you're going to. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all kind of get that impression of like, you know, like it, it's easier to convey your feelings to somebody through an email or through a text or, or something rather than face to face. And sometimes it's easier to convey your feelings to a complete stranger. Like you're saying, like, there's just this weird yeah. thing that hu- that's how humans are. Apparently that's also how genetically engineered humans are. We don't know. about <laughs> We don't know about trills or Klingons because they didn't seem to, you know, really go deep into confiding into her, but are confiding in her. But yeah, I think that's what it is. It's like when there's just somebody there that is, just wants to talk with you that you're not seeing face to face that you don't know for six hours or four hours, you know, eventually you're just going to start kind of spilling your guts. And, you know, it's a really interesting, it's really interesting idea. I thought I'm glad they did this episode. Love the episode. Um, And there's very specific moments that I love that we can get into, but, uh, I did love a lot of the episode and it felt to me like one of those feel good um, episodes where I feel the kind of bond in the cast. Cause I think one of the main big stories, the B story, I guess is the quirk Odo. And that that's a whole nother, like, yeah, that's true. Dive to me into a friendship and the bond that the, they have together as a crew. And it was really cool that Jake Cisco is kind of the third member of that storyline. You know, more it's almost like he's got his own storyline with Quark. But it was an interesting angle for your character because usually he's it's like him and Nog or him and his dad. Whereas he was he took like a he had a different perspective or a different role in this episode of the guy that's going like, you know. What well, what's this? Well, what's that? Well, how do you work this? And you know, he's kind of taken on a, a different role. We saw a little bit of it when the Dominion had taken over uh the station. You know, he did a little bit of that with like Wei Yun and and whomever, but it was really cool to see him in this new kind of role for the story, you know. Actually, let's well, we'll talk all about that. We're going to take our break yeah, right I, now. Yeah, I got some on that. I know. So, I'm, yeah. like, I'm like, what am I doing? I'm opening this can of worms like 10 <laughs> seconds before we got to go to a break. But uh, we'll be right back on the seventh rule, everybody. So don't touch that dial. Remember when people used to say, don't touch that dial? Anyway, Yeah, that's so- when we had dials. <laughs> yeah, I know. Don't touch anything. We'll be right back on the seventh rule. <laughs> 